liberty-minded friends. Today I'm talking about Section 230. What is Section 230? Why is everyone talking about it? And what do libertarians think about Section 230? In today's video, I'm going to be discussing what is Section 230? Why was it created? What is its purpose? And why is there so many misunderstandings and controversy over Section 230? I have written a series of blog posts and created a series of videos to discuss Section 230 in greater detail. This is too much to cover in one video. There are dozens of bills in Congress right now that are aiming to repeal, reform, or modify Section 230. There is also a Supreme Court case coming up um, on Gonzalez versus Google that could repeal Section 230 altogether or, or modify how it's used. So this is a really important issue, especially for libertarians. If you're interested in learning more about Section 230, please hit the subscribe button and read the description because I'm leaving links to all of my research and my blog content in the description. So let me get into what is Section 230. The short answer is that Section 230 is a law that protects website owners from being sued for any content that's posted on their website by their users. It means that these website owners won't be held legally responsible for any content that users post on their website. Think of it as legal immunity for user-generated content. Section 230 is part of the Communications Decency Act, and I'm going to display Section 230 so you can read it for yourself, and I've also got this on my blog you can read in the description. It says, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another content provider. And then it goes on to explain the liability protections for these websites and says, any action voluntarily taken in good faith to restrict access to or availability of the material that the provider considers to be obscene, lewd, lascivious, filthy, excessively violent, harassing, or otherwise objectionable, whether or not such material is constitutionally protected. And this means that an interactive computer service will not be considered the publisher of the content posted by its users. Please note that it does not say publisher platform, it says interactive computer service. Section 230 was created in the early days of the internet, which is why some people think it's time to be updated. They created Section 230 after two court cases came up involving user-generated content, and there really wasn't any legal precedence on how to handle all of this. So the first case was CompuServe, and the second case was about Prodigy. The CompuServe case um, involved a community that they hosted for journalists. CompuServe um, allowed people to post content on their website, so they had a forum for journalists where they posted a daily newsletter called Rumorville. Well, Rumorville posted um, some defamatory comments about a competitor of theirs on their website, and their competitor sued them for defam defamation. And they also tried to sue CompuServe for um, hosting this content, although CompuServe didn't really know about this content. They they didn't moderate their form, so they didn't know about it. And the courts ruled that because they didn't moderate their content, they had no reason to know about it. And they considered it sort of like a bookstore who has tons and tons of books and don't they don't necessarily read every single book to know what's in it. So they ruled that CompuServe wasn't liable for Rumorville's content. So then another case came up involving Prodigy, and it was very similar to the case um, that CompuServe faced. A user of their Money Talk community posted about a large security bro brokerage, and he said that they had crim th that he was a criminal and that he was a fraud. And so this guy, the president of this company, sued Prodigy for um, pu publishing this content. 
Well, the judge in this case decided that Prodigy was um, guilty because they weren't just a distributor of the content because they moderated and reviewed and edited their content. Um, they could be held liable as the publisher of this content. And this created a huge problem because essentially, if you moderated your forums, you could be sued. And if you didn't, um, you were off the hook. And that was what lawmakers were thinking about when they created this law so that the internet could have communities where all the website owners weren't scared that they would be sued out of existence if they moderated their content. So now that you understand the court cases and what brought about the need for Section 230, you might understand the purpose and intent of Section 230. Section 230 was written by Representatives Ron Wyden, a Democrat, and Chris Cox, a Republican, to promote free speech while also encouraging platforms to create and implement community standards. So in other words, they didn't want communities to forced, be forced to have a free-for-all. They wanted them to be able to moderate their content without that meaning that they were automatically going to be considered a publisher of that um, content and could be sued. So what Wyden said, the co-author of Section 230, he said, we really were interested in protecting the platforms from being held liable for the content posted on their sites and being sued out of existence. And we were interested in allowing the platforms to take down some content they believe shouldn't be on their website without being held liable for all the content on the site so that you could really encourage responsible behavior. A lot of people think that Section 230 limits or censors free speech, but it actually protects everyone's free speech. And if it is repealed or modified or amended or changed, it is going to affect everyone on the internet, especially content creators. So if you have a YouTube channel or a blog or even a web business website that lets people leave reviews or comments, it will affect you. Section 230 protects everyone from users' comments on your website or a blog or YouTube channel so that you're not held liable for what other people say. And most of the bills that I've read through, all of them, are deeply concerning. The case that's coming up in the Supreme Court is also concerning. It is very important that people understand that Section 230 allows us to have free speech. Without it, Websites like Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, they might not exist. Back in the early days, they did not have AI tools to moderate all their content and algorithms were not so sophisticated. Can you imagine having to read every single comment or post that was published on Facebook or Twitter? It wouldn't be possible. And even with AIs available, you all know that Facebook still gets this wrong and probably Twitter too, I'm new to that. Changing Section 230 is going to make their job of moderating content that's illegal very challenging and it will affect anyone that uses these platforms. In fact, I would suspect that if they change this, that it will either be the death of Facebook and Twitter as we know it and YouTube, or these services will no longer be free. So I'm making this series to get people to understand that Section 230 is important for keeping free speech. It is not preventing free speech. Both Republicans and Democrats want to repeal or reform Section 230, but for very different reasons. Republicans have been really vocal about Section 230, saying that it gives big tech too much power and allows them to censor and silence conservative views like the suspension of Donald Trump on Twitter in January um, 2021. A lot of them want to repeal it and others want to amend it. But what they are concerned about is they think there's a lack of transparency from tech companies and that they should reveal publicly why they're moderating your content 
and explain exactly why your post was removed. And some of them think that you can't be both a publisher and a platform. And essentially, you should be able to say whatever you want on someone else's website. And Democrats dislike Section 230 for almost the opposite reason. They think it shields tech companies who knowingly host dangerous content and misinformation. Now, we all debate on what that means. Um, While the Republicans think that we should be able to say whatever we want on social media platforms, Democrats want to um, make social media platforms responsible for the spread of misinformation or using their dangerous algorithms to um, allow people to view content that could be seen as discriminatory or hate speech or use their um, platforms to organize dangerous groups and riots. Um, And they, they both have some legitimate arguments and concerns, but both Republicans and Democrats want to modify or repeal Section 230 so that they can have more control over what is said and done on social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook. Libertarians seem to be the only ones that understand the importance of Section 230. We are the only ones advocating for keeping it as is. Section 230 protects everyone's free speech And if we do away with it or modify it, which I suspect we will, it's going to affect everybody on the internet. It is not just going to affect Facebook, Twitter, Google, YouTube. It's going to affect all of us. If you create content on YouTube or post comments on Facebook or Twitter, do you think these platforms are going to let you say whatever you want if they could risk being sued for your crazy stuff? No, they're going to start restricting free speech and censor us even more than we're already censored. As Republicans and Democrats are trying to come up with ways to manage and tell big tech companies how to moderate us, they are creating a situation where they're going to be removing free speech instead of um, providing more of it because they misunderstand why this law is so important. That's why I'm talking about it so much. I'm going to go into other aspects of Section 230, the cases coming up, uh, the case coming up in the Supreme Court and all the bills that are in Congress. There are literally dozens of them and some of them are completely insane. I'm going to be discussing that this week. So if you want to hear more about Section 230, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I would really appreciate some comments on what you think about Section 230. Do you think that it needs to be changed or modified? Or do you agree with me, libertarians or liberty-minded folks, that we need to keep Section 230 as is to protect free speech for all of us? Thanks for tuning in. I'll have another video on this tomorrow. And I appreciate all your support, guys.